All right, so how's everybody doing? Good, it's great to see everybody. We're blessed with another beautiful day out here, so nice to be able to take advantage of that. Um, and yeah, so we'll jump right in. Feet shoulder width, nice big hoop. And we gently turn. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Left hand on the waist, reaching over. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, and three. Raising the arms, we're gonna bend gently towards the ground, keeping the legs straight. Just go as far as you can. One, two, three. To your right, two, three. To your left, two, three. Middle once, inhale, and exhale, excellent. And again, one, two, three, to your right, two, three, to your left, two, three, middle once, inhale, and exhale, good, again, one, two, three, to your right, two, three, to your left, two, three, middle once, Inhale and exhale. Wow, it's a gorgeous day. <laughs> Stunning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. And we switch. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Let's cross our arms, place the hands gently on the knees. We're going to use the hands to kind of brace and support the knee as we make a gentle circle with the knees. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Let's switch hands, switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. One and two. Hands on the waist. We're going to turn the head gently side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One and two. Back and forth. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Tilting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, one, and two. And rotation, looking all the way around. One, two, and three. We switch directions. One, two, and three. Nicely done. Let's open the feet up a little wider. 
arms out to the sides. The arms are just along for the ride, so we don't want to kind of throw the arm into it. We do want to turn the head because usually you turn the head, the body will follow. Try to look behind you as we turn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, and four. Very good. Now we're going to step out, we're going to point our left foot 45 degrees and using the brick, step out in a straight line with the toe up. We call this an empty stance. And we're going to gently, with, while keeping our shoulders on top of our hips at all times, shift forward, bending the front knee, straightening the back, sit back, forward, back. Good. We pivot on the heel, shift to the, to the right, pivot on the left heel, and we go forward back, forward, back, pivot on your left heel, shift to your left, pivot on your right, forward, back, forward, back, pivot, shift, pivot, forward, back, forward, back, pivot, shift, pivot, forward, back, forward, back, one more time, pivot, shift, pivot, forward, back, forward, and back. Very good. Shake it out. Deep breathing. We bring the palms up, elbows down, elbows out, big breath in, and let it out slowly as you come down. Good. Palms up, elbows down, elbows out, Inhale and exhale. One more time, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale and exhale. Beautifully done. Hands on the waist. We're going to do shoulder rolls going back first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two, going forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Now we're going to do arm swings. We're going to pick up our arms hinging at the elbow, palms face us. We're going to turn the palms over and let it free fall. We inhale on the upstroke. And exhale on the down. All breathing is done through the nose. Very good. Deep breathing again. Excellent. Very good. So now we're going to make a circle with the wrists. We don't want the hands to go higher than the shoulders, and that determines the size of that circle. Very good. Excellent. We'll change directions, come over the top and down the middle. Very good. Both palms face down. We're going to keep the hands in the same direction. We're going to make a big circle, turn to the right, lift. 
left down, right lift, left down. On this next one, right lift, and we go vertical with the right arm, and then change directions to the left lift, right down, left lift, right down, left lift vertical. Good. To the right, one, two. On the third one, we go up. To the left, one, two. To the third, we go up. Good. To the right, one, two, and up. And to the left, one, two, and up. Very good. So when we're doing this, as much as your shoulder will allow, even though we're turning to the waist, when we go to the vertical position, we want our body facing the front. Because if I turn this way, it takes some of that mobility out of the shoulder. You're not getting the full range of motion. So even though you turn towards it, when it comes up, you turn back facing the front, and you'll get even more range of motion out of it if it's there to give, right? If we have an injury or something that's not letting us go up all the way, that's OK. It will improve over time just by getting it as close as you can to that position. Whoa, <laughs> they're, they're shooting at us. Those squirrels are vicious. <laughs> So OK, we're going to put our hands, palms face down, bending the knees, and we're going to gently shift to the left, shift to the right. Again, note that I keep my shoulders on top of my hips, and also that the knees bend. So if I don't bend the knees, I run out of kind of room where I'm in that balance zone a lot faster. As I shift to the side, if I bend my knees, it helps to keep my body vertical. Right? If you think of a skier, how they bend when they get to the side, if they didn't bend their knees, they would just fall over. And so we want to use our legs to shock absorb and keep our body vertical. So we shift to the left. Let's lift up. So we're going to stand up on the left leg, lifting the heel of the right to take all the weight off. Bring the foot in, out, good. In, out. Shift to the right, lift, very good. In, out. In, out, excellent. Shift, lift, bring the foot in. In, out. Shift, lift, bring the foot in. Out, in, out. Shift, lift, bring the foot in. Out, and in. Good, so while we're doing this, we're kind of reconnecting those nerve endings at the bottom of the feet that tell us where our balance is to the brain because you can feel kind of when the weight starts to shift from one side, when it, it's more on the other side, you can feel that weight kind of leave this side. When you pick the weight off of that foot, you feel it free up. This enhances your sense of balance and your kind of connection to the ground, which is a pretty critical skill. So okay, from here, let's go with the feet together we're going to lift our knee. So we're going to lift up with the right knee, right hand, and we're going to switch. Left knee, left hand. Good. Right, left. Right, and left. So good. So actually, everyone's doing that re reasonably well. Um, one thing to make note of is that just as I don't want to kind of crash and fall into the step, when I transfer weight from one foot to the other, I don't want to just, wow, OK, he's got a strong opinion. So I don't want to just kind of slam my weight onto this side and then pick this side up, right? Because that doesn't help improve my balance. What helps improve my balance is that in order to bring this foot down, I bend my supporting leg so that I'm making very gentle contact with the ground. And then I gently shift my weight to that side, and it becomes easier and more natural to lift the other. So we want to be aware of that. Another thing is the width of our feet matters, because it's, it's intuitive to think wider is better when it comes to balance. And for certain things, it is. But when we're in motion, it's better to keep your center of balance, your center of gravity right on top of your feet if you're going to move your feet. So if my feet are shoulder width, then I'm shifting side to side. It becomes harder to lift. If the feet are directly under me and I pick it up, and put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, nice. Pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, and put it down. Very well done. So now we're going to put our left foot, yep, making sure I'm not kicking the chair. 
left foot back. And actually, before we do the hands, we want to just bring that foot straight forward and lightly touch, lightly touch back, lightly touch forward. If we can keep from putting our weight on that foot when we land, even better. And one of the things that will help us to do that is to bend the supporting leg. So if the leg I'm standing on, if my knee is locked straight, you see that it really affects my body position. If my knee is bent slightly, then it's a lot easier, not easy, but easier, to move that foot without putting weight on it. Right? So that's kind of the first stage of that exercise. The next stage is we're going to counterbalance with the arms. This is exactly what happens when we walk. Right? Everyone would agree that this is probably a normal stride. Right? And that if you see someone doing this, you think something's a little off. Right? <laughs> or it, sure. <laughs> but the body naturally counterbalances this way. When we're doing this exercise, one of the major differences outside of our actually taking the step and moving forward is that we're thinking about what we're doing. And that can be a distraction to the brain and coordination. And you can end up kind of, and you're like, well, how the heck is this happening? I know how to walk. So just be kind in your outlook to yourself when we're doing this, because it is easy to get distracted while we're doing it. So we're going to put all our weight on our right leg, lightly touch back with the left, left hand forward. And we're going to counter with the arms as we come forward, back, forward, back. Very good. Forward, back, 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 forward, and back. That's beautifully done. Let's switch sides all the way on the left. Right foot back, right hand forward, and we counter with the arms forward, back. Very good. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, and back. Excellent. So one of the things which is not always easy to do, but a critical element of having good balance is relaxation. So when we're, especially when we start to do things that challenge our balance, like that involve being on one foot and moving that foot, that's a fairly strong challenge to balance. Um, we tend to get a little nervous about that. And we get physically tense because we're a little bit mentally tense about, well, how's this going to end, right? I want to I wanna walk out of here on the feet I came in on, right? Um, but actually, your mindset can make a big difference. So before you begin moving, if you just kind of remind yourself, everything's going to be OK. We've never lost a person in Tai Chi. <laughs> We're going to just relax and try to breathe through that movement. It actually can help to improve your balance. Right? Very good. So let's try the next one. The next one, there are two versions of this. And whichever you're comfortable doing, you can do. We're going to do the first one first. Crazy, right? So we're going to put our, all our weight on our right leg, lightly touch with the left. We're going to put the left out to the side. Again, not putting the weight on it. Bring it in, out, in. Out, in, and out. Good. With that foot to the side, we're going to put the hands to the opposite side. Hands are going to travel together. And again, they counterbalance. So they come across as we come in, out, in, out. Beautifully done. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and in. That's really well done. I'm hesitant to bring up the second version only because everybody's doing so well with that. Um, another iteration of this exercise is if we point that supporting foot 45, this opens up the hip and actually allows us to come past that foot. Right? So the reason that I don't keep this foot facing this way if I want to get by that foot is what ends up happening is, in order to get around this leg, my foot comes out like this. And that obviously is going to affect the balance. I point that toe 45. It opens up the hip. And it allows this foot to come through. So those are the two versions. Whichever you're more comfortable doing, we can do. Hands to the side, left foot to the left. And we come across. In, out. In, good. Out. Excellent, everyone. In, out. In, out. In, out. In, out. 
in and out. Beautiful. Let's try the other side. So we're going to point that left foot to the left, put the right foot out, hands to the other side, and we come across as we come in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, excellent, in, out, in, and out. He's locking us out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do deep breathing again. We're going to bring the palms up, elbows down, elbows out, big breath in, and slowly out. Again, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, big breath in, and slowly out. Very good. One more time, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale, and exhale. Awesome. So the next exercise we're going to do is silk reeling. The next two exercises, silk reeling and the open and close exercises, appear to be pretty complex because they are. There's a lot going on, but we're going to break each of those exercises down. And this can be done 100% in a seated position. You'll still get all the same stuff out of it. So what we're going to do is point our right foot uh, dead center coming towards the front. We're going to make a 90 with the left foot, so we put the arch of our left foot against the heel of the right, and we're going to step out with the left foot. Okay, So from here, we have this kind of alignment of our feet. We're going to shift to the left, relax the hip. You find your body turns to the left. Sit back on the right, release, turn to the right. Shift, turn. Sit back, turn. Shift, turn. Sit back, turn. Really nicely done. So now we're going to bring the right hand to the left shoulder, left hand to the right hip. We're going to shift to the left, lift the left, draw down diagonally with the right, lift the left elbow, turn to the left, and bring the hand down. I know that's a lot, but here we go. Right hand to the shoulder, sit back, left hand to the hip. Shift to the left, lift the left, draw down with the right, turn, draw down with the left. Right hand to the shoulder, sit back, left hand to the hip, shift to the left, lift the left, draw down with the right, turn, draw down with the left. Right hand to the shoulder, sit back, left hand to the hip, shift to the left, lift the left, draw down with the right, turn, draw down with the left. Very good. So when we're doing this, we have this joint angle, right? We have the reference of the shoulder, bringing that hand down at a 45, the reference of the hand at the hip coming up. And that works when we pivot from the elbow. So what I mean by that is this is the point that that motion comes from. So it looks like this movement's much bigger, like the arm's more stretched out and this hand's higher. But actually, the position is this is at a 45. The elbow is still bent here, kind of resting on the invisible counter. It's only when I've got to this position that I then lift and turn. So I go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's try that on the other side. So we're going to again realign our feet, step out with the right foot this time. Yep. We're going to bring the left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down with the left, lift and turn, draw down with the right. Good. Left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, shift, lift, draw down, turn, draw down. Left hand to the shoulder, sit back, right hand to the hip, shift, lift, draw down, turn, draw down. Left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, Shift, lift, draw down, turn, draw down. Left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip. Shift, lift, draw down, turn, and draw down. Very good. OK, so the next exercise, we're going to lightly touch with our left toe. We're going to point our right foot kind of 45 to the front, and then we're going to step out in a straight line. Again, where I put my foot matters. If I put my foot over here, it's going to be really hard to keep my balance. If it's over here, I'm facing the wrong side. So facing the front, I align my foot with the heel of the supporting leg and step out. 
Now we're gonna cross the wrists. We're in a vertical elbow position, right? This is more vertical than horizontal. The left hand forward in front, we're gonna lift the elbows to horizontal, extend straight out with the left, and turn the body to the corner. We drop the elbows to vertical, turn back to the front, and cross. So we lift to horizontal, extend left hand front, turn to the corner, drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Good. Lift the elbows, extend, turn. Drop the elbows back to the front. So we have lift, open, fall, close. Bless you. Lift, open, fall, close. Good. Lift, open, fall, and close. Very well done. Bless you. Let's try the other side. So we're going to point our left foot to the corner. We step straight out, crossing with the right hand on the outside this time, still vertical elbow. Lift to horizontal, extend out with the right hand as we turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front as we turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, we turn to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, we turn to the front. Good. So just one quick note about this exercise. All of the movement that happens after we set the joint angle from vertical to horizontal happens because we move the body. Right? So it looks like I'm doing this. Right? But actually, I'm only doing this. The rest of this is because I'm turning my waist. So one of the things that happens is we're trying to keep an eye on this hand that goes to the side, and we end up kind of losing sight of the hand in the front, and we end up overreaching with this hand because your eyes aren't and you're like, well, it's got to be doing more than just going to the side, and we end up pushing out. What I, what I want you to try to do is keep your gaze fa focused on the front so that your head doesn't turn even though your waist turns. So this does two things. One, it forces us to use our peripheral vision, which is a pretty good thing, and actually also helps us with balance. And then the other thing it does is it helps to get a little more movement at the connection of your neck and your body, because my head is facing this way, my body's turning, so you can see that this connection here is mobile. Right? If I, turned, if my, if I had two bolts in my neck, I did this. I couldn't keep my gaze in the front, but because I'm relaxing the body and the neck, as I turn, I'm still have, I still have my head facing the front. Very good. So obviously that exercise is fairly complex, right? There's a lot going on there. Next one is much more simple. We're going to go feet shoulder width, raise up, draw the elbows down, press and settle. So we lift. Draw down, press and settle, lift, 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 draw down, press and settle. Very good. Now we're going to hold a low hoop, so the elbows are out. Your arms are kind of at a 45 degree angle off the shoulder facing down, and your palms are facing up towards you. We want to relax everything and breathe gently. Very good. Let's go shoulder height. You'll notice a little more tension at the shoulder when we do that. Draw the elbows down, holding the small ball between the palms. Good. Let's bring the elbows out. The hands descend. We're going to turn the palms face down. Straighten your arms, your legs, and most importantly, the spine kind of as though you were a marionette puppet being picked up by that string at the top of the head. So even though we're standing tall, we're also relaxed. We're going to straighten the wrist, fingers towards the floor. Good. Deep breathing, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale, and exhale. Very good. Palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale and exhale. 
<laughs> Excellent. One more time. Palms up, elbows down. All kinds of action out here. <laughs> Place is coming down around us. So, okay, um, we're going to step out into that same empty stance that we were in before when we were doing the silk reeling exercise. Uh, this one, we're not going to lift and turn. Once we get to this angle, we're going to come right back to here. So we're going to put the right hand at the shoulder, left hand at the hip. We're going to shift, open. Right hand comes down, left hand comes up. Make sure that elbow's bent. Sit back, right back to the hip and shoulder. Good. Shift and turn. Sit back, reset. Shift. Turn. Good. Sit back. Reset. Shift. Turn. Sit back. Reset. Shift. Turn. Sit back. Reset. And one more time. Shift. Turn. Sit back. Reset. Very good. Let's try the other side. So we step out with the right foot. Left hand to the shoulder. Right hand to the hip. We're going to shift to the right, lift the right, draw down with the left, and then sit back, reset. Shift, open, good, sit back, reset. Shift, open, 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 sit back, reset. Good. So without shifting, I just want to try something. You'll feel a difference. Um, a lot of times we think that the hands or the arms are much more active than they are. And a lot of times they're just passive, meaning that they go along for the ride and they move because the body moves, right? So if I'm here, I have my right hand at the shoulder and my left hand at the hip. I can, without moving the body at all, let these hands pass each other and end up in this position. I'm not facing the way I want to face ultimately, but I can get the arms to do that. And that's kind of more active with the arms than I actually want to do. What I'd like to do, ideally, is that I start turning my body. I've already set the joint angle, and the hands are going to move as a result of that. So I end up facing the corner. I come back to the front. So I have my right hand at the shoulder, my left hand at the hip. And I'm going to turn to the corner. Just let the arms come along for the ride. I come back to the center. I'm going to turn to the corner. Come back to the center. I'm going to turn to the corner. Come back to the center. So you feel a difference between doing this kind of purposeful action with the arms and turning the body to make that happen, right? So that's just something to keep in mind because that's one of the things that we're kind of courting after in Tai Chi is the dog wagging the tail versus the tail wagging the dog. The dog is the body and the arms and your legs are the tail. So we're typically not moving the hands independent of the body. We're moving the hands because the body's moving. Right? Okay, very good. So let's come back to that shoulder width position, palms face down. We've done the one where we did both circles. We're going to do a single circle. So we'll start with the right hand. We make that same circle. Good. Very good. Now we're going to make the circle with the left hand. Very good. Now we're going to go right, followed by the left, followed by the right, followed by the left, followed by the right. Very good. So now we're going to start with the right again. This time, when we pick up the right, we're going to turn to the right corner. We'll switch and turn to the left. So we pick up the right, turn to the right, put it down, pick up the left, turn to the left. Good. Put it down, pick up the right, turn to the right, put it down, pick up the left, to the left. Down, right, down, left, down, right, down, left. Very good. So you notice that when we're doing these circles, we don't let the hands just go straight all the way down. And the same is true with cloud hands. We don't want the hand just resting at the side of the body. When you put this down, you kind of want your wrist bent as though you were resting your hand on an invisible counter about the height of your hip. And if I turn my body, that comes with me, kind of wiping the top of that counter. 
So I know it's an extra thing to think about, but what we're going for is we pick up the right, my left hand's already on that counter. When I turn to the right, it comes with the body. I put the right down, I pick up the left, and as I turn to the left, the right hand comes with me. I put it down, I pick up the right, I turn to the right, the left hand comes with me, good. I pick up the left, I turn to left, and the left hand comes with me. Yep, very good, that's much better. Okay, so let's go again to that low hoop position. We're gonna lift this hoop up above the eyebrows, turn the palms out, fingers towards each other, drop the elbows, cross in the middle, doesn't matter which hand, and back down to the low hoop. So we lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, very good, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, and one more time, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop. Very good. Let's go shoulder height with the hoop this time. We're going to turn the palms out. We're going to create a figure eight pattern on its side, shoulder height. So we drop the elbows, the hands come out, bring the elbows in, the hands come in. Out, in, out, very good, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out and in. Good. Palms waist high, palms face up. We're going to bring the elbows out. We kind of start this arcing motion. We're going to bring the hands around to complete the circle. Gather two fists and extend. Good. So again, palms up, elbows out. We form the circle. Form the fist, extend. Palms up, form the circle. Form the fist, extend. Excellent. Palms up, form the circle, form the fist, extend. Palms up, form the circle, form the fist, extend. Palms up, form the circle, form the fist, extend. Palms up, form the circle, form the fist, and extend. Beautifully done. Neutral position or triangle position, the fingertips, the height of the nose, we're gonna keep the center line. So we draw straight down with the right hand until the heel of the palm is about the height of the navel. And we don't want it to kick out like this. We want it to come straight down. And now we come around, very nice. Draw straight down with your left and around. Down and around, good. Down and around. Down and around down and around, 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 down and around. Beautifully done. Horizontal elbow with your right arm left palm against the right palm from the inside and we have one elbow up one elbow down we're going to alternate the shoulder and elbow position nice and relaxed beautifully done very good let's try the other one so we're going to go horizontal elbow with the left palm facing us right palm against the left palm. One of the ways that we're gonna be able to tell whether or not we have kind of too much tension in the shoulders is that the hands, the center of my palm is gonna kind of keep its position in space. And the arms are gonna move, but you notice that my hand doesn't kind of go side to side. Good. Very good. Nice, so we're getting that action in the shoulder, moving the joint for greater mobility. Very good. Now we go back to that triangle or that neutral position, and this one's draw the bow. So we're gonna turn towards the right and back to the middle, towards the left and back to the middle, 
towards the right and back to the middle, towards the left and back to the middle, good, towards the right and back to the middle, towards the left and back to the middle, nicely done. Okay, so even this exercise, I talked about the gaze before when we were doing opening and close, how we don't want to turn to the side. When we go to here, if you think of this as kind of targeting with a bow and arrow, you wouldn't go, okay, I kind of got it, and now I'm going to turn away. Like, that's just showing off, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you're here, you turn towards it, keep your gaze in that direction, even though your body turns back to the middle. Right, so let's try that. We're in that triangle position. We turn towards the right. We're looking to our right, even though we're bringing our body back to the center. Very good. Turn to your left, looking to the left as you turn your body back to the middle. Good. Turn to the right, looking to the right as you turn back to the middle. And to your left, looking left as you turn back to the middle. Awesome. All right, let's open up the feet a little wider with the toes facing out to the corners. We're going to bend the knees gently. We're going to cross our hands, lift, and make a big circle. So again, we cross in the middle, lift, big circle, cross, lift, big circle, cross, lift, big circle, cross, lift, big circle. Very good. Now we're going to turn to the right, cross, lift, same thing, keep our gaze to the right as we turn back to the middle. Beautiful. Turn to your left, cross, lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Good. Turn to your right, cross, lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Turn to your left, cross, lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Turn to your right, cross, lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Turn to your left, cross, lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Excellent. So let's go feet shoulder width. Crossing with the right hand on the outside. We're going to lift with the right, press with the left, and then switch. Good. Switch. 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 And switch. Very well done. Deep breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Very good. So as I always ask, um, and the answer is not often, uh, yes, I have a question, but does anyone have any questions before we continue on? We'll move into some of the form. No questions. OK. <laughs> any concerns? Anyone kind of stressed out about Tai Chi? No? OK. <laughs> I mean, look, it can happen. You know, it's, it's the opposite of what we're going for. But it can happen. We get kind of like, oh boy, you know, this is going to be a challenge. And, but uh, I know everyone's up to the challenge. So what we'll do is let's do um, grass the sparrow's tail. We had also worked on that single whip position last time. So if you recall how we, how we find the 45 degree with the arms, there's a couple of ways we can do that. If we put our heels together with our feet facing the 45, if we put our hands kind of knife edge on the thigh, Looking down, we trace that line as we raise the arm shoulder height. Good. Drop the elbows, turn the palms out, and hook the right hand. Good. Again, we draw the hands down. We're going to raise up from the bottom till the arms are shoulder height. So the arms are also at 45 degrees. Turn the palms out and hook the hand. Good. The other way we can do that is if our feet are shoulder width is that we know that in front of us is 90. So the sides is 180, and half of that is 45. We drop the elbows to 45, turn the palms out, hook the right hand. There's our single whip position. So again, we go to the front, we go to the sides, we go half of that distance in, drop the elbows, turn the palms out, hook the hand. So by doing it this way, hopefully what happens is over time we build the muscle memory so that we can find that position no matter wh how we get there, right? That I'm walking around, I go, I want to find 45. There's my 45, right? Doesn't matter because your body becomes acclimated to kind of finding that direction and position. How you get there in the beginning, whichever method works is 100% fine. Um, another thing we can do to reinforce that position because 
the more you put yourself in a position or a posture, the more that your body starts to recognize that position or posture, right? So if we're 45, sorry, if our feet are shoulder width, <coughs> if we bring the, left, the right hand 45, bend the elbow 45, hook the hand, now come across with your left hand, touch the wrist and come back to 45. Bring the hand down, you have to turn to the right side to let that finger touch and then turn back, 45, good. We come across, touch and back, 45. Interesting thing, if I don't turn my waist, I can't touch the wrist, right? I have to actually turn the body that closes the distance and when I come back, I also need to turn the body to get back to where I started. So from here, I come down, I turn towards and come out and back. Good, come across, towards and back. Very good, okay. So why don't we go through the form sequence now. We'll see if we can get through the first section, which is that stork flaps wings, if you recall. And don't worry about the legs. Um, you can certainly do the arms in the seated position. As an example, if I were doing the form in a seated position, I did my preparation, left hand on top, beginning style, flying diagonally, right hand on top, grasp the sparrow's tail, single whip, holding the ball, flying diagonally, right hand on top, beginning style, stork flaps wings. Now I know it's easy for me to say that, but, <laughs> but <laughs> just to say, don't let the fact that we're doing the legs uh, hang you up from doing it with the arms because the, the narration for the arms is going to be exactly the same regardless of what we're doing with the feet. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do the first one facing you in mirror image and then I'll do where we're turning the back. Okay, so we're here, preparation, we draw down and settle, good. So we're going to shift, pivot on the right, shift, touch the toe, step out with the left, empty stance, draw down with the right hand, left hand neutral position. Horizontal elbow with the left, palm against palm, we shift forward, good. Sit back, kick the left heel out, shift our weight to the left leg, alternate the elbow, draw down diagonally with the right hand, that's flying diagonally. We step up, step in, step out with your right foot, right hand on top, now we do grass the sparrow's tail, horizontal elbow, we go forward, extend out, connect at the wrist, draw down, flip, and we go forward. Now we're going to hook the right hand, pivot on the right foot to the right corner, shift to the right leg, feet together, we step out, pivot on the heel, and we come back single whip. So remember, we want to keep that right hand on the right side and the left hand on the left. Now we're going to come center and low with the right hand center and high. This is holding the ball. Shift to your left, pivot on your right, flying diagonally, left hand comes up, right hand comes down, good. We step up, bring the right foot in, right foot out, right hand on top, horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm, we go forward, good. For those on your feet, we step up, feet shoulder width, and now we all raise the right hand, bend at the waist, turn to your left, and come back up, stork flaps wings, and that's the first section. Really good. So just as a reminder, when we have this high hoop position, I want to make sure this is round. One of the easiest ways to do this is to point my fingertips towards each other. So a lot of times I think I have a round position, but if you look from the side, it's not really round. But if I point the fingers towards each other, it kicks the shoulder and the elbows out, and it gives me that nice round hoop. It's the same thing when we're here. It's just above the head with the palms out. Good. So now I'm going to do it kind of conventional view. All right. Actually, I'm going to move this chair just so I don't bump into that. OK. So here we are. Preparation. Draw down. Pivot. Step out with your left foot, left hand on top. Horizontal elbow, beginning style, we shift forward. 
sit back, kick your left heel out, shift to the left leg, alternate, draw down with the right hand, flying diagonally. Good. We step up, step in, step out. Right hand on top, now we go grass espouse tail. Beginning style on the right. Extend the right arm out square, connect at the wrist, sit back, draw both hands down to the left hip, left palm up, push the right hand to the right hip, lift the hand to the shoulder, shift forward. Sit back, hooking your right hand, pivot on your right heel to the right corner, shift to the right leg. Feet together, we're going to step out with the left foot, pivot on your left foot, leaving your right hand where it is, we're going to turn the waist, opening up, single whip. So both arms are 45 degrees off the body. Yep, so the left hand is out 45 and the right is out 45. The right hand is hooked and the left hand is open. We come with the left hand to the center and then down. We come with the right hand to the center and high holding the ball. Shift to your left leg, pivot on your right heel, cross the wrists and fly diagonally. Good. We step up, step in, step out. Right hand comes on top. Horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm. So the right palm is thumb up, and the left palm is inside. We go forward, step up, taking the weight off of the left foot. Bring the foot in, go shoulder width, and now we're going to raise the right hand as we press with the left. Palm out, bend at the waist. Turn to your left, and we stand back up. Big hoop, fingertips towards each other, and we settle in the legs. Nicely done. So I know it's been a while since we've gone through that first section. How does that feel? Yeah? <laughs> the confidence is uh, staggering. <laughs> Actually, you know, to be able to get through it, especially having not done it in some time. I know, we, you know, before pre-COVID, we were fairly far along in the form. Um, but that's a, that's a really solid thing to be able to get through that to that point, Amazing. right? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, so here's the thing, right? Um, yeah, well, that also is, is tricky, right? Especially because typically I wasn't doing any of the form mirror image to you. I would do the form only conventional view and kind of run around and get in between you so you could see. Um, so we, we, we have to adapt things to the present circumstance, unfortunately. But so that can take some getting used to. Um, you know, the other thing is that muscle memory uh, while it is like, take, like riding a bike and that once you have that muscle memory, it's hard to lose the muscle memory, sequential memory, no such rule applies, right? So the order in which we do things, if we don't do it consistently over time, we can easily lose that. The good news is it comes back pretty quickly. It just takes that same repetition that got you there in the first place, right? So what I'd like to do in, uh, in optimistic preparation for us moving forward with this because we're able to get through the first section. If you recall, the second section has the brush knee section, right? Where we do brush knee two on the right, one on the left, one on the right. And so what I'd like to do is just a refresher of the brush knee movement. Let's start without the legs and we're going to do it mirror image, right? So this can be done in a seated position just as well. We're going to go triangle position. Good. Draw down with the right hand, neutral position. In this case, this is the only two that we enter the brush knee from this position, but we're going to palm out with the left, round out to the outside with the right. Good. Horizontal elbow with the right. We turn to the right corner. Alternate the elbow. Draw straight down with your left hand. Turn to the front. Adjust your left elbow and palm out with your right. That's brush knee on the right hand side. So we repeat. We bring the left hand on top, palm out with the left, Round out to the outside, good. Turn to the right corner, alternate the elbow, draw straight down with the left, turn to the front, adjust the elbow, and palm out with the right. Very good. Neutral position again, left hand on top. This time it's beginning style on the left, so we raise the elbow, palm against palm. So your right elbow's down, left elbow's up. We're going to turn to the left corner, alternate the arms, draw straight down with the right, Turn to the front, adjust the right elbow, and left palm out. Good. Neutral position, right hand on top, horizontal elbow, palm against palm. We're going to turn to the right, alternate, draw straight down with the left, 
turn to the front, adjust the elbow, and palm out with the right. And back to neutral position, left hand on top. So that's the entire brush knee series, right? So let's do that one, one or two more times without the legs, and then we can put the legs to it. So we're here, triangle position. That one was close. I'm your witness, he's gunning for you. <laughs> so, so we're gonna draw straight down with the right hand, palm out with the left, and round out to the outside. Good. Turn to your right corner, alternate the elbow, draw the left hand straight down over the hip, turn to the front, adjust the left elbow and the right palm out. Very good. Repeat, neutral position, left hand on top, palm out with the left, round out to the outside with the right, turn to the right, alternate, draw straight down with the left hand, turn to the front, adjust the elbow, right palm out. Very good. Neutral position, left hand on top, this time horizontal elbow with the left, palm against palm, turn to your left, alternate, draw straight down, turn to the front, adjust the elbow, and palm out with the left. Good. Right hand on top, horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm, turn to your right, alternate, draw straight down, turn to the front, adjust the left and right palm out, and back to that neutral position. So just as a reminder, one of the most important things that we can do to help us as we progress through the form is to clearly define horizontal or vertical elbow. It makes actually a huge difference in your ability to recall the sequence. And here's the reason why. If I am my right foot forward and I palm out and I do brush knee on this side, this elbow is already up like it's supposed to be. So when I know that I'm going to alternate the elbow, which one would come up? Not the one that's already up, but the one that's down. And that's going to set me up for kind of successful navigation of that. Same thing here. This elbow is horizontal. I go, OK, I'm going to go forward. What can sometimes happen is two things. One, we just forget to give the clear definition of that position. So we may go from a vertical elbow where we bend the wrist. We think, OK, that's it. But actually, it's the elbow that needs to come up. And the other thing that happens is, in anticipation of what's next, we're here, we know that this hand is going to end up at the side, and so instead of clearly determining which one is which, we kind of just start to bring this hand here, and then this is out of position. So if I turn and both elbows are kind of in a limbo, not, neither is horizontal nor vertical, it becomes a lot harder to remember what's next. But if I can clearly set this is my horizontal elbow, this is my vertical. OK, what goes down must come up and vice versa. I turn back to the front. I get to here, I repeat that. This is clearly defined. OK, I go to here. OK, clearly defined. So it makes it a lot easier to remember. I would never say it makes it easy to remember because I don't want to get chased out of town with pitchforks and fire and all of that, but it does make it easier if we can clearly define that hand posture. So now let's try, um, again, I'm going to do mirror image, but we're going to do this with the legs on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our right foot forward, empty stance, neutral position. OK, we're going to draw down, palm out, round out. So we want our left elbow up. We, uh, I'm doing this wrong, aren't I? <laughs> Let me just convert this. Hold on. So we're here. Yep. OK, sorry. <laughs> See that? The cognitive benefits of Tai Chi strike again. OK, sorry. We're going to have our left foot forward, our left hand on top. We're going to palm out with the left and round out with the right. We're going to turn to the right corner, alternate. Now, as we draw down with our left hand, we want to flatten our front foot. This is going to help us when we turn and shift forward to keep our balance. Good. We sit back, neutral position, left hand on top. Again, we palm out, round out to the outside with the right, turn to the right, alternate, draw straight down, turn to the front, and shift forward. Good. Neutral position. Horizontal elbow with the left, palm against palm. We go forward. Sit back, toe out with your front foot, shift forward. 
lift up, pause so you, the momentum doesn't carry you forward and step out in a controlled fashion. Now we kept our left elbow up, so we're going to turn to the left. Alternate, draw straight down, flatten the foot, turn, and we go forward. Beautifully done. Neutral position, right hand on top. Horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm, we go forward. Nice. We toe out, shift forward, step up, pause, step out in a controlled fashion, turn to your right, alternate. We draw straight down, turn to the front, adjust your elbow, shift forward, and that's it. Beautifully done. <laughs> I see the, whew, boy. <laughs> Right? So again, uh, Tai Chi is not a simple exercise, right? It's something that challenges our brain as well as the body. Um, I'm probably a terrible example of that, but it does have strong cognitive benefits, right? <laughs> like, uh, the fact that we are doing something that is complex is a challenge to the brain, which helps kind of keep the synapses and the connections in the brain firing and active, right? The brain is just like any other muscle. If we don't use it, it becomes weak, right? So the fact that we're having to keep track of all of this stuff actually is really useful to kind of keeping the mind active and keeping it sharp, right? Uh, again, it can rob you of your sense of left and right, especially in mirror image, but uh, that's par for the course. Let me just check and see where we're at for time. I think we might be close. Yep, in fact, we're close to the point of being past uh, four minutes. So <laughs> uh, just as a reminder, um, you know, thank you so much for Walpole Council on Aging for having this class. This is an awesome way to spend an hour. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or elsewhere and you see the video of this, um, this is what it's like. None of this is CGI. Feel free to come on down and join us at the Walpole Council on Aging. Thank you to Walpole Media for uh, coming and filming. Um, you can also find more at my website, which is martialartsforlife.net. Um, and then we, I have classes by Zoom and all kinds of other stuff going on. And then we also have a YouTube channel for my teacher school, Calvin Chin's Martial Arts Academy on YouTube. And you can subscribe there. We have over, at this point, over 400 live classes archived. And everything there is 100% free. So, uh, all right, that's the plugs and the pitch. And uh, thank you all for coming and we'll see you at the next one.